Welcome back to Eco. Let's start the episode by doing a bit of follow-up from last episode, where I remember when I said that it doesn't really matter that you've got uh, your land marked out if in single player, it actually does. That's the difficulty I was having with uh, basically the rooms not counting. If we go into here, uh, we have a bed and it's not counting as a bedroom. Well, that's because I didn't have it marked. So if you want to have your, uh, or get your sort of deeds back, um, here they are, land claim papers, uh, you can left click with the, with the stake in your hand and you'll get them back into your inventory. At which point you can remark them wherever you like. And we're going to want to basically, um, wow, I didn't want to actually, well, didn't want to actually do that. Well, oh, I didn't use up one, that's fine, good. So I do actually want to put it down there. So let's just see that and nothing happens. Let's put it down again. And nothing still happens. Third one. Still nothing. And then fourth one. And there we go. So now that the bed is inside a room, is inside of my property, you'll see down here we have a house value. We have a wooden straw bed inside a bedroom and then a bathroom with a latrine. I did go and create a larger sort of room between the episodes. Uh, so I just extended our existing hut and I actually built up one. So this roof is one block higher than it previously was, mainly because you can't really put a, a, a research table into one of these rooms unless it uh, actually um, basically is three tall. So we definitely want that. Thanks very much to the commenters that gave both of those pieces of advice. And uh, we basically could knock a wall through here, I think. Uh, I think it's uh, solid. So, yep, there we go. Okay, knock that wall through. And I'm just going to pop that outside for a second. And then in here, we, we can see we've got a table. So this should count then as a general room. So uh, we just need to basically uh, do the same thing again. What we're going to do is uh, just mark all of the rooms. And I've got four deeds left, which should be enough to cover this whole room. There we go. And this one also counts. So you see now we have three rooms. One that's general, one that's bedroom, one that's bathroom, and then there is a fourth type that I can never remember the name of. But there is, a, I think, a fourth type of room, so we do actually need to get one of those as well. Over time, what I'm actually going to end up doing with this is having a um, probably a set of 5x5 five five rooms. So you can see, if I just go and grab that, uh, let's just see, so you can see this. So let's just grab these for a second. Okay, so let's pop into here. You can see this room is uh, one, two, three, four, five, and it is four. So we'll probably have to extend that outwards by one, one way. And again, the same thing. This is quite a small room, but then this one is again, uh, three, four, five, six is one too large. So we can move the wall over one, etc. End up with a few square rooms. And you can either put them in a long line like I've been doing and just filling in the ground a little bit, or you can uh, put them in a grid pattern. Doesn't really much matter. Uh, and then we can build upwards to basically build a second floor. So for now, that's perfectly fine. And uh, I have my stuff available. It's coming daylight, so I should go out and basically grab some stuff, bits and pieces, and see if we can get some more food. Uh, I've got some more charred, charred beets here, which is actually doing fairly good for early part of the game. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is uh, to start research. So I made a research table and you can make it, I think it's in, it's in your general workbench. Let's pop over here, uh, research table, uh, there it is. So it needs plant fibers, you use that with a scythe on the ground, stone, which you can get from any stone, convert it over using the process recipes and logs, uh, you basically don't process them into lumber or anything, uh, or into uh, hewn logs. Uh, just leave them alone and then you can craft the research table. So in here we have that available and I already crafted the first one, which is to say basic engineering. Um, from here, you can then do other things with it, but basically you choose in here. It's the first one on the list and it's just 10 hewn logs. So you may as well get that going. And then you'll see the rest of these all require different stuff and the majority of stuff we definitely do not have yet. Um, we don't have sand, we don't have uh, mortared stone, So, but this is where we're going to be heading back when we want stuff. Now, if you're on a multiplayer server, the next step you're going to want to do is to basically uh, right-click on this and create a basic engineering skill tome. Uh, create it, read to gain skill or share with other players. Is it my inventory? Uh, it is. So there it is, and I can basically right-click to learn basic engineering and I get some more land claim papers, more importantly. That's something that will happen uh, over time as you actually go through and start getting more stuff. And of course, you can use that to basically give yourself more land. And I can obviously 
extend this back over my stockpile again as before. Now I'm off to go and get a bit more supplies and then I'll bring you back when we're ready to take the next step. I should note here we have uh, basically a talent choice in Carpenter, so we need to do that and this is just before I head out to, to do get the supplies. I get a choice between parallel processing, increase the crafting speed of related tables when they share a room uh, by 20%, or uh, doubles the speed of related tables when alone. Okay, I'm really not sure which one I want. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave that talent alone, I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to close away from that and we'll maybe come back to it later. Uh, I don't think I need... Um, do I need logging? I don't think so. Although, um, interesting. Do we get anything useful in here? It's just basic calorie conservation and increases the damage of axes and stuff like that. Maybe we should, but we only have one star available to actually use and we've used a few of those. I've got the advanced campfire cooking. I've got Carpenter, well, rather the Hewing, and uh, what I'm also going to want before too long is things like farming, particularly gathering. We're going to want to be able to create a soil sampler to be able to choose what we will actually want to um, plant crops, and probably hunting as well to basically generate you know, supplies for, um, for food and stuff like that. So maybe we want all of those. In any case, I'm just going to take gathering for now and uh, I'm going to hopefully not regret it. And that uh, will consume less calories when we actually do so. And uh, we get extra yield from picking stuff up, which is always very, very nice. And we get the nice soul sun rays coming in through the, uh, the windows as it comes into morning. All right, off to gather some supplies then. One other handy tip, if you want to clear ground around your hut or wherever else and you don't care about gathering fibres like this, you know, you don't care about those whatsoever, just basically gather some of any block really, it doesn't matter as long as you can place it down to the ground and you can basically get rid of them. If we just put it down here, you can see I can pick it back up again and that's gone. Same thing there. So if you want to clear ground, you can do so quite easily. You don't need the scythe to actually do that. The scythe is mainly to just gather yourself some fibres. Just a thought before I head off again, try to get some more um, supplies. And part of that new supplies is basically getting a weapon to basically grab yourself some food. So we are going to need a bow and some arrows. Because we don't have the hunting skill, we're going to be pretty terrible at this. Uh, one of the main things that's going to happen is whatever you shoot is going to run away because you're not going to be able to kill it immediately with one shot. So uh, whatever you shoot, you're going to have to run after. And uh, yeah, so why don't we just go and uh, try a buffalo and um, that's probably going to need me to run after it for quite a ways. So let's give this a try. So you can see we get a uh, thing here and we've shot it and it's done one damage and the bison doesn't seem to even care. Okay, we're shooting it in the... Oh, that could be a different bison. Uh, this is mainly the problem. <laughs> Which bison is it that I actually shot? Uh, we don't know. There we go. And uh, we keep firing. And eventually, hopefully, we're able to actually kill a bison. We'll see whether that turns out to be the case. I've got 20 arrows. Oh, there's some more damage. There, there, we, there we go, it went down. You kill the bison, find the carcass to harvest it. And again, we are not going to have particularly uh, too much sort of butchery skills uh, right here. So uh, we've got a carcass probably in our backpack. Yes, one bison carcass. And uh, yeah, we don't have a butchery skill book just yet. So we may be able to just basically campfire cook it, but we'll actually see. We certainly don't want to overhunt these things, but uh, having some meat available will certainly help this down here. You can see... Right now, what we're really missing is protein, which is basically, aside from beans, uh, is meat, basically. So we can go and get, get that done and head back to the base. And there we go. The most basic of recipes possible. You campfire bison. Gets us a food, which is pretty much just protein and just fat, and it's 550 calories. We also get some tallow as well with it, which is useful to combine with other recipes to make bannock and other such things. Uh, I'm not sure we can actually use this anywhere else uh, for these, the bison carcass for the moment. So this is going to have to be it at least to get started. Note, however, that it will take a good 20 minutes to cook. Um, yeah, you're cooking the entire bison, remember? 
and you don't have any advanced skills, so we've got to have we've got to make these charred beat last, and then we've got to take a look at the power. So five times two is going to be, you know, obviously ten minutes, or whatever uh, that actually takes. Oh, it says here, 35 minutes remaining. That's fine. Um, how much does this say? 25, 20 minutes, so... Yeah, that's fine. So this must be most of the way through that one log for it not to be five times two. It must have been like five times four or something like that. Uh, sorry, five times eight or something. Anyway, that's all sorted and we can then just leave it alone. Hopefully it's now out of our inventory, which it is, and we can go and uh, gather more stuff. I've been going getting some more wood and I crafted a repair station here so in case any of my tools are wearing down like this stone hammer I can drag them in and it says what my repair cost is it's going to be five stone I don't have five stone so I definitely need to go and get some more of that uh, we are also going to need to go and organize a bit more storage so for that we're going to just go into storage chest which are right here and they're just 10 logs okay and uh, you don't get any savings you, you can't make them on the carpentry station they are on the workbench so that's going to get that going and uh, we also, you may well see in here, we have things like the wheelbarrow and the small wood cart here. Now, vehicles used to be extremely janky. Uh, they, they used to be in a situation that they would just fly off into the upper atmosphere uh, at the slightest nudge. They'd start vibrating and you'd, you'd look at them and they'd vibrate a little bit and you'd back off a little bit and back off a little bit and they'd just shoot off into the atmosphere. I assume that's actually now fixed. This was a quite a number of versions ago I actually played that. So we'll see and people can comment down below if they think that's going to happen or not. Uh, in any case, what you can also do from that is uh, the vehicles themselves get really good. You start to get actually um, industrial age vehicles. Uh, I think that's steam and or coal fired and stuff like that. Um, however, they're going to need roads to actually run on because they generally need a smooth surface, and right now we're just into the dirt era. However, I will craft uh, a wheelbarrow, and we'll actually see whether that actually is worthwhile doing. So we actually want six boards for that, and uh, let me just make sure I do that. So let me just order six boards. They won't take it very long at all, because my, uh, my skills are increasing, so this only takes like 10 seconds per two boards, so pretty easy. And uh, we've got a couple of workbenches out here we can do anything else with. So that's making a storage chest. Let's use this one to actually make uh, something else. Make the actual uh, wheelbarrow. There we go. Four of six. And that should be popping up to six of six in any second. Yeah. There we go. Let's order that and see how it, uh, it performs or not. And our storage chest is now done, so we should be able to just place that down inside a room over here. Create this space available here. And let's rotate that around. So there we go. We have a chest available. We can have another room underneath the table as well. So we have a uh, sort of room for everything we need. And you can see here, we can basically link the inventories together so I can basically move stuff in and out quite easily. So I'm just gonna use this for miscellaneous stuff. So maybe that's seeds. Uh, so various bits and pieces that I actually want. Um, yeah, some food maybe. Uh, fibers, more food. And there's my wheelbarrow. I'm just going to grab that. And then that's granite. So we're going to be processing that as well. And maybe I put my bow and arrows in here and miscellaneous tools. Okay. And we'll later probably have a chest that's purely just for skill books. They will build up. You could try and throw them away somewhere, but uh, you, you may want them to keep them. And that's that done. So let's go and take a look at how well or otherwise this wheelbarrow is. So here you can see a wheelbarrow. We can place it, as you might imagine, rotate it. And there is a wheelbarrow. <laughs> okay. Now, if I then basically can, I can use it or push the wheelbarrow. Uh, using it gets me to the storage for the wheelbarrow. Uh, I can then move stuff around. So if I grab it, I can then push it. And of course, it being a wheelbarrow, is not the easiest thing in the world to move for well to move forwards at least not in this game uh and you can see i can't really drag that up a hill if i just grab over here it has been going to be pulled along behind me and nope i just really cannot make it up a hill while that happens so in order to use this kind of thing uh what we're going to need to do is basically uh build ramps or rather a, a road of some kind let's just press e to drop it again and that means I'm going to need to just decide where I want roads. And that's important when you're actually building a game with 
many players in a community server. So you want to decide where you want your roads want to go. In my case, I can look at, for example, here where I know I've got my property line. And if we extend these rooms out this way, uh, I know I, where I can bring my property to, which means I can put my roads, maybe like a two wide road at least, or a three wide road right next to it. So I've got this space where I'm highlighting right now. We can actually clear out some of that into um, an area we can use for other stuff. In this case, uh, roads. So uh, if we just basically remove that thing, you can see that that is our road space there, there and there. And we can build up ramps, basically. Now, ramps are used. Uh, let me just, <laughs> just dump the, the dirt straight in. Uh, ramps we can make from in here, dirt ramps, so you see. And you need six dirt for it. However, you can use your wheelbarrow. So you can just sit here, grab it, turn, dump it into the wheelbarrow with a right click. And then you can do the same thing. You can use it, just move it forward to so right next to wherever you want to go. And then you can dig and drop and dig and drop, etc. As you might imagine, how you would use a normal wheelbarrow. Except this one happens to probably contain an awful lot of stuff. Yeah, there it goes. So there's plenty of stuff there to be done and uh, we can get on with it. However, um, say we want to move that, we can just grab that and move it to the carry interface, drop it in, and of course later on we'll just leave it in the vehicle and then move the vehicle when there's lots more around. But then of course we can decide if we want a ramp. So dirt ramp, we'll order one, it takes 30 seconds, and then we'll just make sure it's all lined up, etc. So uh, I would want to be here, as I said before, so uh, it's going to have to be uh, pretty much... Uh, this line here and there we go and this line here and we will build up and head towards that hill over there and here my stone ramp is ready so we can place that wherever we like if we, if we just turn that around slightly you should be able to see how sort of how steep the gradient is it's not very very steep by comparison to something like mine well mine, I'm like, not minecraft that's a bad example but uh, there we go. So we can rotate that uh, like that. So it's like a one in four gradient as far as that's concerned. It looks that way anyway to me. And of course, you can put that wherever you like. So for example, here we can make sure that our first sort of ramp is... Uh, well, first of all, I probably want to get rid of you. Okay, and then we can have our ramp go right up against that and place down. And there is our first dirt ramp. So that will label a nice smooth surface for us to get various uh, vehicles up there. And I've got trees growing. Uh, I didn't mention, maybe I mentioned it last episode, but uh, if I didn't, then uh, just to mention about trees, um, if you clear away the uh, the stumps of trees, and if you clear away the sort of debris that falls from them, like the miscellaneous bits of wood like that right there, uh, then the trees will regrow as long as you don't deforest the area. If you deforest the area, then they will not grow back. You can see this one starting to regrow here. And uh, I need to basically clear this area up, but it consumes so much energy to do so. Right at the very start, you may just want to like, selectively forest at least to get started. The other thing you can actually do, and it only have, works on certain sort of trees. Uh, this one is one of them. But uh, if we pick a larger tree than that, this one maybe will do. Yeah, that will do. If you get close to this tree and then you chop at it. Well, maybe I need to be a bit higher so I can permanently select it. There we go. You'll see it gets rid of the leaves, and that reduces the amount of debris that drops onto the ground when this whole thing falls over. Um, not completely, but uh, it does actually help a little bit if you intend to actually do that. So just bear that in mind. And if anyone's got any more hints and tips and tricks and stuff, feel free to put them in the comments below, particularly in the early game, as we are right now, if you're following along. Our bison just finished, and I've now got eight of basically bison steaks, charred meat, in my inventory. So let's see how that actually changes this gauge. See right there, carbs is highest, vitamins even higher. Uh, so yeah, carbs isn't highest. <laughs> the second highest, fats uh, sort of lead, dropping a little bit behind, and then you've got protein after that. So if we just go and use up some of our this, you'll see the protein has now appeared. It's that orangey area. Uh, in the middle of between the yellow and the red. So if we just do that and keep pressing it, see we get 550 calories a time, but also look at this gauge. This gauge really helps. So we start to increase our skill per day, basically by consuming this stuff. So up it goes. And we want to ideally have a very nutritious diet of equal amounts of all four of those things. So it requires eating different things to bring this gauge into balance. And once you've got it to a certain balance, there are going to be foods that just take care of everything. Uh, really sort of superfoods, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, 
keep your eyes on this and uh, things are, are going to be a little bit easier now that we actually have a little few more calories to actually use up so yeah i can get more stuff done Ooh, that looks more like more like more my um more my ramps are now done so uh let's just place these around spin them around there we go there we go and we got a three wide ramp okay we can see you going up through that hillside and out to the forest on the other side etc etc you can make turns and all kinds of other stuff with these ramps i just wanted to demonstrate it to get us started and we can uh, carry on doing that over time i don't need to show you anymore presumably while we're talking about food, we are also going to want a fishery to be able to get some uh, fish recipes. That is a one passive way of actually generating uh, food. So we definitely want that as an option. That won't take it very long as well. And we also want this masonry table option uh, to be able to make uh, carved stone and stuff like that. So for that, we're going to need a lot of stone and we're going to need a fair amount of logs, uh, which needs me to do a little bit more excavation. Uh, this, by the way, I did also make a, a wood cart. Uh, where's my wood cart? Did that actually populate yet? Uh, maybe I didn't actually trigger it being made, but the pretty much the same vehicle as far as I remember uh, we'll, Let's just actually make one because there's no way to actually prove that without actually uh, doing it. So a small wood cart uh, There we go. So let's just order one. It'll take a minute and 30 I think they're the same vehicle entirely uh, in that you want to drag them both backwards Don't try and push a wheelbarrow forwards even though that's how you would work in real life This works perfectly fine as long as you drag it backwards uh, if you drag it forwards or try to push it forwards, it's not going to be too much uh, good at all because that first front wheel. You could technically still do that with the wood cart. It has two wheels, if I remember rightly, but even so, just use it like this. Trust me, it works fine. <laughs> Leave it alone. And here's the fishery. I put it in my bedroom for now, but it'll have its own, well, one of its own rooms later. And uh, the thing we're actually wanting to actually craft is fish traps. You don't want to go for manual fishing poles. No, you want something uh, to basically trap fish and um, get yourself some food. So this is going to require some hewn logs. So as before, we will just get a few of those done. Uh, hewn logs. Uh, let's just actually craft all of them. I need to go get some more wood anyway. So uh, that will craft into some fish traps. And then you'll want to put them, uh, they are, they are going to be underwater, so you're going to need to find a source of water. How is my world looking for that kind of thing? Hmm, yeah, how about um, animals? How about fish? So salmon, maybe? Okay, so anywhere along the river will do us just fine. And we have that river fairly close and a lake over here as well, salmon. Yeah, seems like most of them are going to be want to be over here. So just underneath the water surface, we're going to be able to want to put some fish traps down. At least once they're crafted. Back to gathering wood. And here's our small wood cart. Your choice entirely as to which one of these you actually choose. Uh, or you're going to want to be able to drag it around. There we go. And uh, looks a little bit more stable, but as you can see, it's got the, pretty much this exactly the same capacity as the wheelbarrow. So choose whichever one you like, um, you know, entirely up to you. Sometimes this looks a little bit more stable. Let's take, let's take a look at it and try it forwards. Uh, it's still unstable forwards. Yeah, you see, it's going to naturally want to turn and back on itself. So, yeah, either way is fine. And uh, you can just pick it up again with a hammer in case you want to just stow it. In our case, uh, back into a uh, chest or something like that. We don't need it for now. And maybe we'll use it later. Anyway, put a wheelbarrow for now. And while mining into the hillside right here, you can see we've got found some dirt, which is the same stuff we got around. Uh, this is granite, if I remember rightly. Uh, that's basalt over there. Basalt is actually the hardest rock to actually get rid of. It's really sort of awful. Uh, limestone sort of middling, and then sandstone is also really easy, like that stuff over there. Sandstone, you find iron ore in sandstone, so there is a bunch of iron ore further down. But you can see we already have this. Now, that is that the same as this? Uh, same texture? Yeah, so it looks the same texture. So this is going to be harder to actually move. So, yeah, if I do this with an iron pickaxe, one, two, three, with an iron pickaxe. With a stone pickaxe, it's even worse. So, yeah, we can pick up basalt, and it's just going to be harder to actually mine into than stuff like this, which is a single, single click to actually break through. And I can't carry any more than four basalt in my inventory at once. So having a cart available 
is is very useful indeed okay so we now should have everything we need for the masonry table so let's order that as well and we'll get that down we'll be able to just pick up the fishery uh in between when we don't actually need it anymore um and then that should be good there and is there anything else we need just yet probably gonna need another workbench at some point soon uh, and a road, road tool basically that turns dirt into roads uh, so you can basically smooth out the dirt and you don't have to worry about anything else so uh, yeah basic engineering one is going to be needed fairly soon um, the, the, in fact this is requires basic engineering one I think that's to use it so we should still be able to build it but we can't use it just yet anyway that's fine I actually need to wait until 1 hour 18 minutes passes but that's uh, maybe between the episodes and I did mention there was four types of rooms earlier. The one I've actually forgot was the kitchen, because I don't really have anything to generate a kitchen now. The first thing you can do to generate a kitchen sort of room is the ice box, I think, uh, somewhere around here. Is it in here or is it in, is it in the carpentry? One of them may have the ice box. Um, is that available yet? Ice box, there it is. So it's going to require nine hewn logs and six boards. So we need to get those done as well. So, uh, so six boards, um, I don't have quite enough, but I can go and get some more, uh, some more wood and haul it back. But, uh, yeah, we're going to need a fourth room somewhere to actually generate a kitchen to make sure that this gauge at the bottom right here or bottom left, bottom right of this gauge area is, uh, is enough. So yeah, I'm going to need more wood and then I'm going to be able to build a, basically an extension to the house and, uh, get that all sorted. And I've now extended the house out into the sort of backyard. I've got one space left to go. It's through the bathroom at the moment, but that everything's going to get readjusted to be like five by five rooms. So you see here, there is a room or going to be a room at the back here and behind the bedroom. And uh, we're going to be, you know, just moving this internal wall once everything's done uh, out to the back there. So we just grab a uh, storage. I don't even need more than one. And of course, we'll need to put the floors in as well, but uh, that's that's fine for now. So now we've got a room. So we've got a volume of 75. You can see you've got some, uh, well, I've been hewing lots and lots of logs, so I don't need any more of those just yet. And that means I can just go and grab the ice box uh, from here somewhere. There it is. And this should turn it into, oh, once I grab it, it should turn it into a kitchen, hopefully. And change that gauge at the bottom left to be uh, something else. So place. Yep, there we go. So we got four different types of house uh, house rooms, and you can see they're terrible quality right now. But we'll improve those over time. We're still on the very first tier, of course, and I have 38 minutes before before I'm able to get another property. Uh, so I'm going to go out and hunt again. I think I already made some arrows or asked it to make some arrows for me. Yeah, 36. We're going to go and uh, get some bison and stuff like that. One thing to note there is that to unlock butchery to be able to carve everything up quite nicely, you're going to want at least one bison carcass, three elk carcasses and three hare carcasses. By far the hardest of those are the hares. They're tiny and they move quickly, uh, but you don't need very many arrows to actually kill them. So yeah, your choice there as far as uh, how easily you deal with them. I certainly find them harder than everything else. Anyway, uh, there, for example, is a, a deer, and uh, well, whether this will actually work or not, mm, oh, missed. Okay, that really should have hit it. That certainly hits it, and then of course you've got to hit it while it's moving. <laughs> I hit it in the head from that range, and then you've got to go and catch up to it, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you have some uh, food at the end of it. I think I hit it again. Uh, yep, here's our deer, so we can just take the deer carcass, and again, as before, we can just keep it on ourselves in our backpack, or indeed, we can just go ahead back. I'm going to head back, because I want some more, uh, basically some more meat to, to basically even up my gauge. It's quite small right now, I don't want to eat any more beets, because uh, that will reverse the, the progress of the gauge. It's already reversed by 5, this, this figure, it was 150, so we do want to get that to be all even as much as possible, just like the rooms gauge right next to it so yeah that does take a little bit of uh, time to do let's just go and take a quick look at what we can do for our deer carcass it should just be probably this the simplest option here yeah campfire deer we only get four of the charred meat out of that unlike the bison but it is a little bit easier it takes like four arrows if you miss the head if you hit the head once it takes two more arrows after that so three including a headshot four otherwise 
and you can see we don't have any other options right now as far as crafting anything else in here well we can make tomatoes that's perfectly fine but uh yep so if we want meat available then we have to basically go and uh, order one of these so that's that taken and uh, you can see i also have a couple of fish traps in my inventory back here we can then go and take them out to the river which is over this direction and basically plant them and come back and check them every so often so let's just take a look at the the map again uh it said it was going to be perfectly fine this kind of area so why don't we just head over to the river and here we are on the river we can place them down wherever we want to i'm just gonna put them in a couple of here like that and we'll just come back to them periodically and just see whether they actually catch anything i'm not sure if you need to put bait in them i don't remember you need to do that but uh hey let's uh can we actually sink here no let's not as easy as you might imagine we'll have to come back to that in a minute anyway and uh well not in a minute we'll need to leave them for quite a while if i remember rightly head back to base and uh continue to see if i got any more meat off on the fire well while i was out there i got a couple more carcasses for us to cook up into campfire stuff so again uh we're probably gonna get the the basically the big horn which is basically a, a, a goat uh, or sheep i should say sorry i think it is uh and then we have a um bison yeah we'll order that as well and get ourselves some meat from this thing so we should have some already yep and i can just grab that from my inventory uh and quickly pear fruit we're not going to actually need at the moment so i'm just going to want to fill this myself up with that and uh, we're getting more even it looks like we're probably going to need less vitamins more carbs um what about something like rice uh do we have that kind of thing available rice uh there's like a sticky mess or something that you can make down here rice sludge sounds wonderful lots of carbs very little vitamins and a little bit of protein and we can make a few of that so let's just make some of those and let's see if we can rebalance our carbs a little bit and then get the less protein out of this continue eating carbs and meat to actually rebalance this into four quadrants, four equal quadrants, ideally. Finally, for this episode, I crafted what looks like two masonry tables accidentally. Um, well, yeah, well, I guess I may have already made one. Anyway, we've got a masonry table we can use. And I'm going to just put it in this back room here for now. Hopefully that counts. Let's take a look at the status. Yeah, that counts fine. It uses 25 meters uh cubed or cubic meters of 75 so basically these five by five rooms can cope with three of these basic uh, stations in them if you want to actually do that and uh, it still counts as a kitchen as far as that's concerned and i'm not sure why i ended up making two of these uh that's incredibly wasteful but um yeah, let's just hide that no, no one no one tell anyone it's fine and then we can see we can craft a whole bunch of other stuff so we can uh, grind granite into sand uh, grind sandstone sand's going to be quite useful later for basically compacting resources but uh that's not important immediately and you can see there's a whole bunch of the stuff we can make including mortared stone and that lets us uh basically i think it's like slightly uh, still tier one but we can actually obviously craft stone houses and stuff like that with that but um it does take some mortar and it does take stone obviously in my imagine for something called mortared stone mortar can be made in a bunch of different ways we'll get into that fairly soon and you can see there's a whole bunch of uh, stuff over here about using the mortaring skill uh, but also this leads on to things like the kiln uh, which is used for bricks pottery and all kinds of other things like a bakery oven we've got in here as well uh, but that does need bricks so we need to get that first and then iron bars so we're also going to want to be able to make an iron and that will help us repair these free iron tools we got when we started to get certain um certain skills opening up so yeah i'm uh, i'm pretty good so far i think that's pretty pretty good for an episode we've got fairly far in we've expanded oh there's another <laughs> another creature to hunt down we've expanded our various uh, bits and pieces we've got four different rooms in the house we're getting a more balanced diet we've expanded the house and we've started to get roads ramps and vehicles that seems pretty good anyway storage let's just see if we can finish off by getting our diet to something a little bit nicer uh let's put that whole way for a second and where is my rice <laughs> there's the rice okay so let's just uh, eat a couple of this so that brings the carbs up i'm going to clearly need more of that and then let's bring that up as well it's getting better but i think i'm going to eat more of that rice sludge i'm going to order more of it so let's just get uh that it was down at the bottom somewhere wasn't it rice sludge yeah 
and we've got plenty of rice so what i'll just sort of like uh, i don't know 10 of it and we'll just use that to rebalance our wheel otherwise uh we're up to 164 down there at the bottom left uh whoops 164 down there at the bottom left so uh that's going to continue to increase and that will also help how fast we're actually leveling and i have 17 minutes left so that's obviously we're going to be between the episodes if you enjoyed this uh, this episode and indeed this series give it a thumbs up down below that does help the channel out subscribe and share if you want to really do so but if you're a subscriber you best click on the bell otherwise you won't get notific notifications for more episodes and of course that will be to your benefit to see how i get along and see if you can beat me if you're playing along in your own games as always guys thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time for some more eco